Assalamu alaikum friends, this is Nadir Shah in Chicago and you are watching my channel Knowledge for Quality of Life. Friends, for the last few months, uh, I've been talking about vitamin D uh, as it relates to our well, various health outcomes uh, through research, through documentation, through papers, through data, through some charts. Today, my objective in this vlog is to make it personal. So I'm, I'll be sharing some of the data of my personal experience and some best practices. Because the way I work that, you know, I no matter how much I read, uh, no matter how much I study or research, if it doesn't apply to my life, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm sure that most of you are in the same boat. Because at the end of the day, we have to make things relevant to our life. So what I'm gonna achieve, uh, try to achieve today is share some of the data, some of my personal experience, and then we'll go move forward. So let me share my screen. Uh, I plotted this data. So what you are seeing here, as you know that, you know, in the first vlog, I said that, you know, I caught my own deficiency and then I went full blown, check each and every member of the family and everybody got tested. And this uh, 2017 was the year we, when we first tested. And this is my level. You see 20.2 nanograms per milliliter. This is the lab range, 30 to 100. So of course I am deficient. And across here, what was the calcium level at that time when I was deficient? Because you remember that last, my previous vlog, we talked about toxicity. And this is the, this is the big myth that you know, uh, people don't understand that you know what is toxicity. You know what what uh, how the calcium plays a role. And if you properly take vitamin D along with the cofactors, you know you never get toxic, uh, or, or your level doesn't go beyond the lab range. So you are seeing here uh, on the right side where my cursor is. This is the lab range for the calcium level between 8.5 to 10.5 milligram per deciliter. And this was my initial base level calcium level when I found myself deficient in vitamin D at 20.2. At that time, I was not taking any vitamin D supplement whatsoever. So my calcium level was 9.1. Same with my wife. My wife was base level. She is the lucky one, uh, her base level without any supplement. She was at 44.4, uh, which is great. But I'll come in a bit, uh, the benefits which we have reaped so far. Uh, and this was my mom's level, uh, 26.5. And of course, this is the lab range for vitamin D and this is the lab range for calcium. And my mom was at nine calcium as a base at a base level. And my wife was at 9.2. Of course, all these ranges are within the normal range. Now remember that you know uh, I I must say that you know my mom uh, who is 99 right now uh, and she's doing phenomenally well uh, as compared to the peer group age. Um, she doesn't take any cane, uh, any walking stick, no walker. Uh, of course, we don't let her walk on her own. We are always there, one of us, uh, because you know at this age, risk of fall goes through the roof uh, and. We are trying our level best. The rest is nature is playing, um, you know, uh, own role in taking care of her health. So her level was 26.5. And uh, uh, right now, uh, last year, uh, when we tested every year, um, her level was 77.5. My wife was 44.4 uh, and her level was 94.5. And you see that you know how it increased in a steady manner. Uh, now, when you see mine, uh, I increase in a steady manner. And last year I was uh, tested at 104.4. So my doctor got a little bit concerned when he saw this number. And when I saw this number, I got concerned, even though I was taking the same supplement 5000 i didn't increase my dose the only dosage i increased in 2020 
when the COVID broke, uh, we started taking 7,000 a bit. We, we went back to 5,000, but even though with 5,000, my j level jumped. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is that over the course of time, I was taking K2, we were all taking K2 with vitamin D from day one. But over the course of time, I, I, I as I unfolded many things in through my research, that there are many other cofactors which goes with D, like magnesium uh, and, and vitamin C as well. So I have added last year vitamin C, not in the supplement form, I take in the food form. When the time comes, I'm going to share that information as well. As I said in my previous vlogs, that my first choice is food. And if any vitamin and any mineral or any nutrient which is not available abundantly in food, then I go to the supplement. And that supplement should not be synthetic one. It should be organic or natural resource. So I'm. we have been taking vitamin C as well. So now you see that you know it's steadily increased over time, but the only time I dipped from 56.3 in 2018 to 38.8. And I want to illustrate this point here because it took me over six months to figure it out that what's going on, why I dropped. So, and, and we know that, you know, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So, but nobody knew, at least I didn't know at that time, how much fat to take. Because when you say it's a fat soluble, of course, you know, everybody would think that, you know, it's good to have good amount of fats, regardless, you know, how much, uh, you know, you consume with the fat and it's going to, uh, you know, dissolve in your lower gut pretty well and you will get the absorption well done. So that's what I was thinking. And I started in this time eating my avocado with my stir fry veggie salad. So I was eating my avocado in dinner, where you see that in 2019, and right after dinner, we, we take all of us vitamin D and K2. So that's our largest meal of the day. And we've been taking with right after the largest meal of the day. As I said in my previous vlog that, you know, you have to take with the largest meal of the day to get more maximum absorption. But Avocado was part of my largest meal. Now, remember that avocado has 26, average avocado size has 26 gram of good fats. So what it happened, and, and I was scratching my head that why it dropped, even though I'm taking with a fatty meal, largest meal of the day. And it took me a while to hunt it down that there was a study done, and I have included in the description as well that study that they have divided in this study three groups. They have give one group no fat at all, and they supplemented with vitamin D dose. The second group they gave a medium size fat, you know, you know, mid size fat, fat, you know, moderate size fat, and the third group they gave a huge amount of fat, which is which was, you know, thirty five grams. The moderate size fat was about eleven grams. So what they have observed out of three groups that the maximum D absorption happened at about 11 grams of fat. So you cannot have a zero fat. You cannot have 35 grams of fat or more. You have to have a moderate fat. So that gave me enough clue that I switched my avocado eating from dinner. I moved it to now breakfast. Now, still since then, I've been eating my avocado in my breakfast. So it went back as suspected, 80.2 with the same number. And last year I added vitamin C and you know that vitamin C is one of the cofactor. It jumped quite a bit. So now if I look at it here, now my doctor is, my doctor suspected that, you know, uh, you know, you have to back it off because you know, you're going to get calcium because he didn't see my calcium level. But if you noticed here that when I was at 81.6, my calcium was 9.4. My calcium was pretty stud steady, 78.8, it was 9.4. But when it jumped to 104.4, my calcium dropped.
And that's the, that was a surprise to my doctor as well. That, you know, normally what vitamin D does, that it magnifies your calcium absorption by 24, means 2000%. But at the same time, I was taking K2 and I increased the dose of K2. Now I'm making natto, uh, it's a Japanese dish, which is the most potent in vitamin K2. So I make my homemade natto, which I'll cover in a separate vlog that how I make it and what are the benefits of eating natto. So this is beyond uh, the you know scope of this vlog. So I'm not gonna dwell on, you know, discuss too much on the natto thing, but point I'm trying to make here is that I increased my K2 here. So I was taking about, you know, more than 500 micrograms of K2. Uh, you know, the form of K2 is MK7 because natto has MK7. So same thing happened with my wife. My wife is pretty much steady in calcium. My mom is pretty much steady in calcium. So you, the point I'm trying to make here that, you know, there is no toxicity concept here at this level. And what we have been saying all this time through the research that, you know, we are trying to take the op optimum approach between 40 to 60. I personally prefer around 60 and above, um, you know, because when you get to the level of uh, 80 and stuff, uh, it's called therapeutic level. So, you know, you, you protect yourself from cancer, MS, and, you know, a lot of diseases because, you know, all the diseases has their own different threshold. So, but the, but the point is that when you increase your D to that level, you have to be carefully watching your calcium level because if your calcium is in tolerant range, there's no concept of toxicity here, right? Uh, and, and remember that at the end of the day, you know, uh, we don't have to be, uh, you know, uh, be our own doctor, but you have, we have to be informed consumer uh, and what we know what we are doing. And, you know, our doctors are always there as a health partner. Work with your doctor, you know, equip yourself with the knowledge and, and work with your doctor and, and become a partnership, you know, as a tag team. So let me stop share here um, the screen and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the benefit. What I was observing before when I was deficient, I, as I said in the previous vlog, that I was getting frequently strep uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, I was getting a strep throat. Uh, I was getting a cold and, uh, you know, a uh, uh, lot of uh, congestion. Uh, my frontal and maxillary sinuses would get clogged. And eventually I end up with antibiotic. So 2018, um, uh, I remember that, you know, I didn't take any Keflex. Uh, I didn't take any antibiotic. Now, my wife, uh, she was taking prior to her fixing D, uh, she has a seasonal rhinositis, uh, seasonal allergies, particularly in spring season. Uh, and it runs through, you know, May, June, July sometimes. And she would take, uh, she'd been taking prior to 2018, uh, three uh, antihistamines uh, like uh, Allegra, Clarinex, Claritin. And she was at a point that, you know, she would be immune to those medications and, you know, medications were not responding. So I, through my reading, I told her that, you know, we have to keep our level at 60 and beyond. And then we see that, you know, how you can fend off those uh, allergy att attacks. And so what, that's what we did. And, you know, uh, then I added vitamin C as well. And now when we used to go before, she would put mask. This is before pandemic uh, because of the allergy, uh, you know, pollens and ragweed and all this. Uh, she would walk with a mask. And then once we fix her level above 60 and she was wearing mask, I said, no, you are not wearing mask. Let me see how you how your body behaves uh, during this pandemic. Uh, sneezing thing. So yeah, of course she would sneeze uh, once a while, but those sneezes, she was telling me that, you know, I don't see any uh, runny eyes and, you know, sneezing after sneezing, it's not turning into hay, hay fever and, and my nose is not runny. So it seems like, you know, I told her that, you know, seems like it's working. You, ha you have to hold that level 60 and above forever for other reasons, including your seasonal allergies. 
And, and we are really truly blessed so far that you know she is completely uh, allergy medicine medicine free. She is not taking any any medications anymore. Okay, so this is the greatest blessing which we have experienced in our family that you know she is not taking since 2018 any 2017 any Allegra uh, any Clarinex uh, any Claritin any sort of medication. As far as my mom is concerned, uh, my mom had uh, a flu positive. She was not exhibiting any symptoms, but uh, during a visit uh, to the hospital, uh, because you know her BP was low, uh, this, is, this was in 2018, and uh, she was flu positive. They found out, they ran various tests, and they said that, you know, your mom is flu positive. I said that, you know, uh, that's fine, uh, what you're going to do about it. And, and they said that we are going to treat her for five days in Tamif with Tamiflu. And that's what we, that's what they did. And I requested uh, my mom's PCP, primary care physician, uh, to uh, run a chest x-ray. Because I was concerned that, you know, when elderly gets flu, the chances are that, you know, they may get some fluid in the lungs and that triggers the chances of pneumonia. And once it happens, it's down the hill. So in the evening, my mom's PCP calls me and he said that there, this is very interesting. I have never seen anything like this. And I got a little bit concerned that, you know, what the news is. And she said that, you know, I have never seen anything like this in my 25 years of practice, that your mom doesn't have a drop of fluid in her lungs. Her lungs are crystal clear. And I told myself that, you know, yes, seems like it, it worked. Because, you know, I have read a study uh, a while back by vitamin D council director, Dr. John Cannell, that, you know, uh, he tested a hypothesis uh, and, and, you know, this, this vitamin D protects you uh, from flu and uh, from complications of flu. So uh, we are really blessed from that respect that, uh, you know, uh, my mom is uh, pretty much resistant uh, and her her health overall well being, uh, her blood pressure medication is completely gone. At this age, my mom's doctor is surprised that you know uh, I've seen that you know elderly goes uh, you know older and, and their medication increases. But in you know in your mom's case, um, you know med medications are uh, vanishing. So I'm not saying that my mom is immortal by no means. She's aging, but at the end of the day, remember that what we are trying to do, we are trying to hold to that good quality of life. And that's the whole idea we have been working on. And I've been working on, you know, and in hopefully next time when we switch the topics, we will talk about that, you know, when we talk about quality of life within the context of healthcare, we are focusing on health span rather than lifespan. We don't control lifespan. What we are focusing on, health span. So the other thing I want to say is that how we take it, as I said that, you know, we take with the largest meal of the day, uh, with the dinner, we take our vitamin D, we take our K2, we take our magnesium water. Um, I make my own magnesium water. I'll be discussing that thing, how I make it, and, you know, why it's so beneficial than any other magnesium out there. Uh, and uh, I also take uh, vitamin C uh, with my wife. So uh, these are the practices which we have been doing, and you know we are we are. I'm very proud to share with you. Uh, and and uh, this is this is my data. It, it doesn't mean that you know it may work for you, but I wanted to sh you know make a connection that whatever I have gone through uh, over the last few months with you, uh, the research that I validated applying on my own family, that you know, how it helped me and my wife and my mom. Also, I wanted to share with you one thing uh, that uh, this slide I wanted to share with you uh, that you know, we have seen all these times, we have, we have heard from our doctors, we have heard in the community that you know, vitamin D does a bone good things, you know, because we are trying to prevent the bone disease, which is rickets. And I showed you in my previous vlogs 
that you know we need only 20 nanograms per milliliter to prevent ourselves from rickets. That's a curving of the bone. Uh, but you know, it's like ricket is just like a tip of the iceberg, which we see above the surface of water, but the entire iceberg, which is deep into the into the sea, you know, which which includes, you know, the, there are a lot of hidden non-communicable diseases which we don't even mention or talk about, which we tried to discuss in the last few months. My objective was to give you a breadth of understanding of this knowledge that, you know, we have to take our blinders a little bit away uh, and think vitamin D in a holistic manner, how it helps in keeping the overall health, overall well-being in the long run. So if you look at this, all these diseases which we have talked about, uh, in, in the, my previous vlogs. So vitamin D deficiency is associated with increased risk of diseases through all our life ages, stages. Uh, so basically this vitamin is from cradle to grave. That's what I've been telling. Uh, this is not even cradle. It's it's in the, just before, uh, right after the conceivement when mom conceives the baby. Uh, the, the game starts from at that point uh, until we kick the bucket. So this is very, very important. I couldn't put any more emphasis than what I have gone through in the last few weeks, uh, probably since November, then I started Vlog because I felt that this is the most important uh, topic uh, in, in overall healthcare that one has to uh, you know, be careful about. At the end, I will leave you with this analogy. I'm sure that you know all of you have seen a uh, symphony orchestra. Uh, there are multiple players, many players who are musicians playing uh, various instruments on their own. They, are, they have expertise in their, their field, whether they are playing violin, they are playing cello, they are playing any instrument. And there's a guy who stands in front of the group, uh, which we call a music director. Uh, he carries a baton in his hand, and he just moves uh, with his hands, you know, those directions. And everybody has to follow that direction to uh, do their own task. And if they don't follow, then probably we may not be hearing a good symphony, good music. Uh, just think about that, that analogy and think individual musicians playing as our individual processes in our healthcare, health system. Every individual process is designed to do its job by nature. And the director, in our case, in our healthcare well-being, is our vitamin D hormone. Just like the director gives the instructions, our vitamin D hormone gives the instructions and raw material to individual processes within our system. So if the just like music director is not gonna play very well or give the direction well, how the music is gonna play out. Similarly, if the raw material in, in, the, in the direction through the hormone is not given to the individual processes, just think about it that you know those processes, some of the processes or maybe more uh, may compromise and they don't function the way uh, they are supposed to uh, function. And over time, what we see that issues comes up as symptoms, which we call it, when we go to the doctor, we see these symptoms. Now, sometimes the symptoms is on the surface, it means that the disease is already inside us. Because, you know, the symptoms is telling us that something is going on with in, within inside, that's why I'm having these issues. And what we are trying to do is a, as a proactive role that, you know, those symptoms doesn't appear. Uh, to the best of our ability. So rather than working in a reactive mode and go to the doctor and running to the doctor, when the symptoms appear, we try to take a proactive approach so that we can maintain the well-being of our all well-being and good quality of life and overall healthcare. Hopefully, I'm, I'm sure that you know you may have gained something out of these series of vlogs on this subject in this topic. Next time, I'm gonna switch gears and, and start something new. 
uh, which is very, very meaningful for all of us. And, and we are going to take it to the next level. Hope to see you. Good night.